Oh hey, didn't quite see you there. I'm here to talk to you about the wonderful world of waves. Isostatic uplift is defined as a rise in the level of land in relation to the sea by the disappearance of glaciers. It occurs when the weight of the ice is removed and the relief of pressure allows for vertical expansion of the crust. It helps to think of the earth as a water balloon. The balloon naturally forms back into its original shape after being put under pressure. It is much the same for the earth. In Canada, there are many examples of isostatic uplifting. Hudson's Bay, for example, has sea cliffs and beach ridges that are nearly 300 meters tall. Lake Superior was also an example of isostatic uplifting. It was once a larger lake with Michigan and Huron, and approximately 2100 years ago, rising land divided them into three separate lakes. Isostatic uplifting also affects global sea levels. When large amounts of water are tied up in continental glaciers, oceanic crust will rise due to the loss of weight affecting the ocean basins. After deglaciation occurred, redepression of the oceanic crust begins because of the increased pressure. The rise of sea level is reduced because of the increase in volume of ocean basins. Hence, isostatic uplift has an important role in hydroisostasy. Isostatic uplifting is cool, but I have to have a coworker right on the water right now who knows a bit more about low pressure systems than I do. I'll give him a call. I'm sure he'd love to talk to you guys about it. Hello, Jim? Yeah, Jim. That's right. Code blue. Alright. Be here. You should be here anytime. <laughs> hey! Oh, hey, Jim! How come you're not wet? Oh, it's the poncho. Oh, of course, dry of all course. the time. <laughs> oh, that's great. I know. Well, I'd love to go tell you guys more about low pressure systems, but you know I'd love slightly more? What we did over there on that nice pier. Let's go! I stopped running and noticed it's kind of chilly out here. Stronger winds and atmospheric lift? We must be in a low pressure system. A low pressure area is a region where the atmospheric pressure is lowest with relation to the surrounding area. Tropical storms and cyclones are both created by low pressure systems. Lows commonly create strong winds and atmospheric lift. These two factors create an environment where air becomes saturated as it rises, thus creating cloudy or overcast skies, which in turn keep the temperature down by blocking the sun's rays. Many of the world's tropical rainforests are associated with low pressure systems. A well-known feature of a low pressure system is a cyclone, an area of low atmospheric pressure characterized by inward spiraling winds. These cyclones often produce storm surges, an onshore gush of water associated with low pressure weather systems. Storm surges occur when high winds push on the ocean surface, causing the water to pile up higher than the sea level. These can be particularly damaging during high tide, combining the effects of the surge and the tide. All of these features are characteristic of low pressure systems. Hey Jim, care for a walk to the end of the war? Hey Jeff, I'd love to, but it appears to be closed due to damage. Oh, no way. Actually, I've just been working on it right now and it should be fixed any time. Oh, really? What happened to it? Well, there were some high tides in here and wrecked the end. Wait, tides can rise? And go down? Yeah, actually. I have the perfect diagram right here with my tools. Let me show you. Oh, great. Tides are caused by the gravitational forces of the sun and moon acting on the earth. 
When water levels are lowest in their cycle and the sun and moon are separated by 90 degrees, this is called neap. Inversely, when water levels are at their highest and the moon is either full or new, it is referred to as spring. Hi, I'm Arnold P. Spotswood, construction worker and geographer. Today, I'd like to talk to you about tides. Tides are stupendous cyclic occurrences that can devastate boats traveling along the coast. Today, we'll take a closer look into how these fascinating forces of gravity cause ocean depth to change and oscillate. On average, the extremes of spring and neap occur 12 hours and 24 minutes apart. 12 hours is the time it takes for the Earth to rotate and 24 minutes is the time it takes for the Moon to complete an orbit. The timing of tides, however, may not always be so exact. Tides vary in different regions of the world due to their distance from the Moon's orbit. For example, springs and neaps in the North Sea are two days behind new and full and first and third quarter moons. Ebb tide is the term given to the point at which water levels are dropping. When they begin to rise again, it is called flood tide. It is very important for sea vessels to be able to predict these changes. Knowing the tide level could prove to be the difference between success and disaster for coastal navigation. For instance, some harbors have shallow sandbars at their entrance and therefore are only usable at high tide. Tides truly are fascinating occurrences, especially noting what they, combined with the storm surge, did to this pier. Well, it's been another fascinating day here at the beach, guys. It has, it has. I mean, the wharf's closed, but the bar's still open. Let's go, boys! Yeah! To decide that the things that I tried were in my life just to get high on When I sit alone, come get a little known But I need more than myself this time Step from the road to the sea to the sky And I do believe that we rely on When I lay it on, come get to play it on 